Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be looking at doing stacked Pro L2s versus one Pro L2. Uh, this is a pretty common technique that you'll see in mastering. You'll use multiple plugins uh, to get different colors onto your track and you'll do a little bit of DB on each one. And it's very different than right just putting one on to do all the heavy lifting. Here I've got one where the gain pretty much works out the same. Uh, the integrated meter is going to be way off because I'm not going to play it from the beginning to the end. Uh, so it's going to appear much higher than normal because uh, I just want to show you the drop section because that's where the biggest difference is really going to live and be. Uh, but so we're going to go ahead and compare these two. So here I've got one where three Pro L2s are all on. And just give a listen to, you know, where the kick sits, how all these things are. And each one, right, this one's doing 1.5 dB of gain. We've got another one doing two. And then finally, we end on 2.8. And they all have later attacks in this particular case. And I have the DB True Peak on anyways. It's going to limit stuff at minus one. In fact, on here, let's go ahead and set this up on the very last one because I didn't do it for this signal chain. So this last one will be our final. You know, the output can't go above this value. And we've got three versus a one. So this is one that's doing 9 dB of gain here that will actually produce a similar output to these in terms of just integrated levels at the end of the day. Um, so let's go ahead and close all these and let's just hear this real quick. So this is with the three Pro L2s. <laughs> gives you some indication of what it sounds like let's go let's go and turn these off and turn on the one pro l2 and let's hear what it sounds like when one tries to do the lifting of what three was doing <laughs> So there's the difference here. Now there's a couple reasons why you might pick one method over the other. First, they sound really different. And another one's, you know, speed, how fast you're going to get it done. But as you can hear between these, the way they handle the bass in particular can be really impacted by this process. So here, when you try to choose an attack value, you kind of have to settle on an attack value that's going to work for, for everything on the very first go where if you have multiple layers of limiters that are slowly edging the game up, you have the ability to sort of massage things out and it's a bit easier to separate the transient away from the body of uh, whatever the longer element is, whether it's a high end sound or a bass kick or anything like that. Uh, so that's, that's one of the big differences between the two styles. And when I'm using this one, it, when, I, when you're using one, it is quite a bit faster. Um, but I fi also find that it could sometimes be quite a bit more tricky to nail where you want your integrated loudness to sit. Again, we're going right at where the drop hits. And so as a result, uh, this is much higher than it actually is. At the end of the day, this settles somewhere around like negative 13.8 or something. So let's go ahead and uh, set up a chain kind of similar to this to talk a little bit about uh, the thought process and why you might maybe do something different than what I have set up particularly here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go with three of them. Uh, some people will go crazy and toss in all kinds of additional plugins uh, just for the color. Maybe they like a, a certain way that plugin sounds and what it imparts onto the sound. So here we've got a Pro L2. This first one, what you'd really want to do, I'm not going to take the time to do it here, is you would go through and let it play through your track, find all the spots where the largest peaks sort of exist, where a lot of layers come together and you get like the biggest spike in your track. And on those, you're going to want to gain up the first one to right around where that begins to just graze the very top of the meter. And so mine probably is closer to two. I'm going to go ahead and go around like 1.5-ish or 4-ish, whatever, somewhere around there, maybe a little higher. And the reason you would want to gain it up a bit is because if all the plugins doing is doing gain, if it has a really strong coloration, then you'd stick with that. With the Pro L2, if I want to really hear these styles and the way the different compressions sound, this is going to be something that I'd sort of fiddle with. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to choose aggressive for this first one, why not? 
and we'll go back and push back on a bit on the attack now there is some there are some older videos on the channel where we go through the styles and i show you how to listen to them in a way that will give you some insight on what that might impart on your sound because with these sorts of moves they could be really subtle and kind of difficult to tell what they're doing until you hear all the little effects put together and so i find that it, it pays to have some listening sessions where you just really push settings and hear what they sound like so that's going to be our first one and with this it sounds like this so see we're not even close to the top right here so if we really wanted to hear the color of this we might even bring the gain up just a smidge until the red starts to move a bit so maybe we'll go up like 2.7 all right that's fine right there we're not quite touching but that's what we're going to do with the second one so we're prepping our stage now for our second we're going to bring this in again we're going to have a later attack mostly because our our limiting isn't really happening here this is just kind of a gain up stage uh so we might even push this in fact let's just go up to a solid 3.2 ish somewhere around there we have room before we hit the roof so there we are now we're just barely smidgen it so this one the style and stuff isn't going to be as important if uh, there's a very particular sound that you like coming out then uh, that might be one reason to pick a certain plug over another for your gain up your initial gain up stage this next one's going to be doing some limiting we're going to go ahead and give it like a db and a half uh maybe somewhere around there and we're going to go ahead and pick something let's go with punchy this guy's this track has sort of a punchy feel to it again so we do not really want to touch the peaks we're going to let the very last one do that i actually opted not to do that here because i liked the effect that it had and so this is a decision sort of you can make when you come to that uh, but we've got punchy gaining it up just a little bit let's just hear that might even go even a little bit more all right so that's good that's fine for that one and finally we're going to add one more and this one's going to be the one that sort of does the most work out of all of them so first we're going to set our limit to whatever the peaking requirement is for the platform you're going to in this case, it's going to be minus, <laughs> minus one, not minus seven. So with it set to minus seven, we're going to go ahead, put up some gain here. Let's go up like three. And this one is generally the one you're going to use to rein, rein in your final integrated score. So you'll go from the beginning to the end and sort of adjust values to hit just quite that integrated you want. But this gives you a lot of control because uh, what we could do here is we could say, okay, this one's going to handle the peaks, right? So we'll maybe have it have a bit of a faster attack. I'll leave it on modern and let's just hear what this sounds like just out the gate. So you might go with that. You might say, hey, the kick's sounding really crushed. We might back it off a little bit right here and adjust the gain in a previous iteration where the kick maybe isn't as touched as much and you just have a lot of power for how you're going to do this. You could change the attack settings on the first two if you feel so inclined. And right now we're putting the most work on this last one, but we could put more work on these, uh, on these. I've got so many Pro L2s on this channel now. Uh, so in this case, we actually have the highest amount of work, but this is really just a gain up stage. So it's not doing a lot of work. So if we push this up a little bit more, we could get some compression out of this one and that's going to sort of smooth things over. And by the time it hits this one, it's going to be more of a, you know, a flatter line so you might choose to do things a bit different on this one uh, you just have a lot of just creative freedoms but those are some things i consider it's mostly a balancing act to me with most plugins there's one or two knobs that you really touch a lot uh, and in this case with the pro 2 it's going to be the gain slider and the attack the style as well but mostly it's getting the attack to sit exactly where you want in the release as well 
Uh, if you'd like to, it can be really interesting to mess with the linking of channels. You can mess up your stereo imaging if you're touching this without knowing what you're doing though. But there's some stacked results. So right now, just with this really, really rough take, we have, this is our result. And then when we have these off and we just look at this first, this first one, we're just one doing all the work. This is our result. And you can see this was quite a bit more bass heavy because of how it's affecting the kick. And this is being just really aggressive all in one take where here we've distributed the load. And so if you want to, you could push one much harder and have the other two just sort of act as support, or you could just go down the one chain route. There's no right way to do this. There's just differences and what you feel is going to produce the best results. There are, however, a couple of technical things that you should get right and are sort of objective because ideally after this, you don't want anyone else touching or messing with your audio that much. Those would be the integrated measurement. Make sure you get that right. Make sure you also have your DB True Peak uh, set to whatever it should be. So in this case, I believe last time I checked, YouTube was minus one DB True Peak. So that's what you would set. If you're going to Spotify or iTunes or any of those, you would go and check whatever the latest you know update is on their stuff and just try and match that to the best of your ability. After that, it's all about just how it sounds and what gives you the result that you really enjoy. Uh, Dubstep, you're going to slam it super hard. If it's classical, you're barely going to touch the thing. Just really depends on uh, the content and what the original artist is really trying to do. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.